my check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Oh. Welcome to church, everyone. Kids, nice job. They bring the joy of the Lord, don't they? <laughs> so that song was about pressing play on a new season. A lot of them started school this past week. We're starting a whole bunch of new ministries, which is why the ministry fair is still happening in the atrium. But today, we get to press play on what God has for us in this moment, in this hour. So will you stand? Let's worship this amazing God that we serve. When all I see is the battle, you see the victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see the mountain move. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, battle belongs to you. And 
And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see the empty tomb. fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our God you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our God almighty fortress you go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. your feet. God, I'll sing through the night. Oh, God, battle belongs to you. And oh, God, the battle belongs to you. the kids come out, you can be seated. This week, a dear friend of mine sent me a little devotional faith manifesto. And um, part of it said, I will preach the gospel to myself daily. And that was such a good reminder. I needed that reminder. Because how often do we preach the gospel to ourselves? 
you know, reminding ourselves of what Jesus did on the cross for us. And that they put him in that grave, but three days later, he rose from the dead. Right? He conquered sin and death. And I think in today's world, with all the fear and all the craziness and the stuff that's happening that we could have never imagined happening, um, it's now it's more than ever, it's more important to just remember what Jesus did for us. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So we need to do that. We need to preach the gospel to ourselves daily. As we do this next song, it's called Lead Me to the Cross. And I just pray that that's our prayer this morning. Jesus, rid us of ourselves and fill us up with you. Lead us to the cross of salvation. I just want to, the kids are going to be doing worship in a different way. Um, it's going to get really dark in here. So kids, if there's any kids out there, just, just be aware. It's going to get dark in here, but keep your eyes focused on the stage. Focus your eyes on your friends' hands and what they're going to be doing. It's, it's amazing to be able to worship God in so many different ways. So let's just make this song our prayer this morning. hill where your blood was spilled for my ransom everything I once held dear I count it all as loss lead me to the cross where your love Rid me of 
Lord, that is our prayer this morning. Lead us to your cross. Lead us to your salvation, Father. We want to know you more. Thank you for your love. Father, I thank you that we don't need to be in fear because we trust you and you're in control, Father. We give you this time. Father, we want to worship and honor you and you alone. You are worthy of our praise, God. So we give you this time, Father. I pray that you would speak to our hearts, Father. Break down any walls that we might have built up in there. We love you, Lord. We worship you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Please. You know, we're continuing this series about more grace, more glory. It's called Overflow. The whole theme behind this as we do our rollouts of our different ministries is how we collectively as a group of people are experiencing what God says in the scripture. He says all the things that we're experiencing are for your benefit, for each of our benefits, so that this grace that's reaching more and more people will continue to overflow into the life of many people so that glory might be brought to the Lord as thanksgiving wells up in each of our hearts. We're going to experience more of that and see how that's applying to our next-gen area of our ministry today is Miss Donna. And I'm grateful to report to you, Pastor Matt's out of the hospital, and he's going to be with us today to be able to share with you. So let's hear from them as we continue this series called Overflow. Well, good morning, church. We are going to continue in our series of overflow, talking about soaking in more grace so that we can pour out more glory. And Pastor Justin did an amazing job last week as he challenged us with the word. He demonstrated that how we, if we want to experience the life of overflow, then we need to die to ourselves and we need to position ourselves to continually soak in more grace so that we can pour out more glory for God. Because you see, we believe in what our five-year vision statement is, right? We believe in this movement that God is doing here at Eastern Hills. We believe that he wants to do immeasurably more. In Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. We believe he is at work. And I have great news for all of you today. God wants to do more in you. He wants to do more in and through your family. And we're excited about that. My name is Donna Zangara, and I serve as the executive director for Next Gen Ministry. So Next Gen Ministry is Eastern Hills Ministry to the littles all the way through high school and into the college years. And we have an amazing team of preschool staff, children's ministry staff, student ministry staff, and that staff is made up of volunteer leaders as well, and they literally come each week and pour themselves out so into the lives and hearts of a rising generation of believers. Because parents and kids, we know, no doubt, we are living in a world with a little bit of crazy, right? <laughs> we, we, we can turn on the news, we can look around us, and we can acknowledge that. But let's acknowledge this too. Let's just take this in for just one moment. See, the Lord has providentially placed all of us, every parent, every leader, every child, every student, he has providentially placed us to be alive right now, during this time, during crazy, on purpose and for a purpose. And this series is amazing at this kickoff season. And I absolutely really love this whole word picture that we have going on with the sponges. Because I'm sure that you have all heard this phrase that children are sponges because they are, right? 
So we know that kids just continue to soak up so much information. Do you know that in the time, the first 1,000 days of a child's life, so that means by the time a child is three years old, they have already learned how to eat, how to walk, how to talk, how to express emotion, how to love, and hopefully how to use the potty, right? <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. <laughs> and through those elementary years, they're still continuing to soak up so much during their years of higher education and all the way into college. So in Next Gen Ministry, we do talk a lot about time. And the reason why we talk a lot about time is because we realize when we, when we know how little time we have, we do much more with that time. We value it a little bit more. The 936 weeks that we have from the time that a child is born until they graduate from high school. If your child just entered kindergarten, how many families do we have that just had a kindergartner start this year? So if your child entered kindergarten, you have 676 weeks left before your child graduates. And if your student just started eighth grade, do we have any eighth graders here today? Eighth graders, there you go, got a couple out there. So you, parents, you have 260 weeks left. We talk about that time because we want to value that time and do the most that we possibly can with it. So everybody gets the same 365 days a year, or 8,000, 760 hours a year. So we're going to use these jars of gumballs right here to help us visualize for a typical family how that time is spent. So the average parent, and we subtracted sleep and school, so the average parent has about 3,000 unplanned hours a day with their children. Then we factored in how many hours they spend in school. So the average child that goes to school spends 12,000 hours a year in school. And then we have church. So even if, and that's a big if, right? So take away vacations and uh, sick days and things like that. So even if a family attended church maybe 40 Sundays a year, and then let's, you know, then there's some extra special events with the kids, and there's some nice nights out for the students and retreats, and there's some shared family experiences that families are having here at church. So, you know, even with all of that, maybe, maybe we'll have 60 to 70 hours a year to influence a child's faith when they're here in this building. Now, that does not diminish the church's role at all. In fact, what it does is it demands that what we do here at church must always have an influence as the families walk out the door. The conversation gets started, but it needs to continue on in through daily life and into your home. We talk, sit, talk about it with our team as taking spiritual development outside of the walls of the church and making sure that it's going back into the home. Because what happens here at church is super important. God's word reinforces that over and over again. Don't forsake gathering together. Something amazing happens when we're together. We need each other. We were built to be together, to worship together, to serve together. So what happens here is super important, but what is happening in your home is even more important. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit, but the church of Jesus is still God's plan A to help people find Jesus. So when it comes to our kids, what are they soaking in? When I started children's ministry 24 years ago, I remember hearing this quote, 100 years from now, all that's going to matter in the life of a child is where they will spend eternity. That is true. But what it also is true is this. Our children are facing cultural giants that previous generations could have never imagined. Here's some data from Data Explorer, where we have a, a graph up there. So this was based on attendance at religious services in the United States by generation. These are people who were saying they attended church services several times a week, every week, or nearly every week. Church attendance in America has dropped from 56% with the greatest generation, those who were born before 1928, to 18% with 
with the millennial generation, those who were born 1981 or later. And further research indicates that the current generations of kids, those born after 2015, when it comes to attending weekly church services, it is less than 11.3%. But what the generations ahead of us had going for them to their advantage is that they lived in a Christian nation. Most people believed in and lived with a biblical worldview. The Andy Griffith Show was still on the air, right? I even watched Davy and Goliath. Any of you out there watch Davy and Goliath? Yes, where they were teaching like biblical uh, foundational things and even praying, and it was on public TV. It was awesome. And there was still creationism being taught in the schools. You know, when we talk about the monumental moment when prayer was taken out of the schools, the things we think is it wasn't just prayer. What was also taken out of the schools was a biblically-based history and scientifically proven education. That was removed from the schools along with it. So this generation, this present generation, is called the Alpha generation, by the way, and this generation now lives in a post-Christian version of America. So what are they soaking in? When we turn on the TV now, we see it seeping with a version of family values, right? So we're going to say that this is us right here, right? And this is sin. Sin entered the world in the beginning of time. Sin was always there, and it is there, right? And now we live in a world where our children, what they're going to soak in is they what, turn on the television, it's seeping with different family values, the music that they listen to, the internet, the secular curriculum that's taught, a, uh, a, a teaching that we began with some kind of natural process and there was no intelligent design. Our kids more than ever need to have a foundation they need to know the redemptive power of a savior named Jesus who came and took the penalty of our sin so that we could live free of it. Because this is what we want our kids to soak in. Because it's going to be around them always. It's always going to be there. But if they have Jesus, and they have this foundation of the truth inside of them, they're going to be able to stand up against this. So what are they soaking in? We live in a world of two religions, really. There are two foundations that shape our worldview. And by the way, they say that children's worldview, a child's worldview is formed by the time that they are 11 years old. So, we live in a secular world that is based on a man's word. So we want to form our foundation on a man's word, or do we want to fund our, our foundation, our worldview, and have that founded and grounded in God's word? Because we can't live in both worlds at the same time. There is no neutral position. So what can we do? What can we do as parents who are passionately following Jesus? What can we do as the church that with all your heart you want to see this generation rise up and be strong and be able to stand against the secular giants that are surrounding them? What can we do? Well, first of all, parents, you can take up Pastor Justin's challenge last week. You can take a next step. You can join a group. You can start to soak in and soak in and soak in all you possibly can because parents, let's face it, if we don't have anything inside of us, we don't have anything to pour out to our families. We need to be full of God's grace and his truth so that we can keep pouring that into our children's life on a daily basis and into ourselves so we have something to pour out. Single parents, we see you. You don't ever have to do this alone. Your church, these leaders that have stood up and said yes to the Lord, they are on your team and they are here to partner with you. You are never, ever alone. And then there's, more importantly, God sees you. I believe he has special grace 
restored for those parents that are parenting alone. And then there's the spiritually single parents. You know, maybe you're running hard after God, but your spouse isn't there yet. But I just want to encourage you from my personal life, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't stop praying. So to all the parents of our church and the way that our kids so beautifully proclaimed a message as we opened the service today, a request that they had, they sang, lead me to the cross. I have this mug, and it sits on my desk. And it says, two combined influences make a greater impact than just two influences. So two combined influences. This is what drives Next Gen Ministry. Everything that we do that we talked about earlier, we can make a great lesson, we can have the kids come in, have a wonderful morning, and then they just walk out the door. But that's not what we're, we know what we need to do. We need to take our hours that we have and influence what's happening here. And so we need to create that take-home piece. We need to create those parent cues that help you know what's being taught in church so that you can reinforce it at home and you can continue that conversation around your kitchen table or at bedtime when you're tucking your little pumpkins in. We have to do everything to set you up to win at home to be the spiritual champions of your children. So we, are, we, we create these things and we send them home every week our little children in preschool are learning that God made them. God made them. He made them in his image. And he loves them. And Jesus wants to be their friend forever. And we're sending you weekly parent cues through email so that you can be able to carry that truth in when you're cuddling your children and you're driving in the car and you're playing with them. Very easy, sweet little prompts just to keep reinforcing that teaching so that we're doing more together, two combined influences than we could ever do alone. For our elementary kids, they're going to learn 150 Bible teachings over three years. And then every week they go home with these God time devotionals. There's four evenings worth. It's something you can sit around at the kitchen table to do. You could do it in the morning before school. You could do it at dinner time. You can do it when the kids are going to bed. And it's just some really cool prompts to help kids to know how to hear from God, how to pray to God, how to talk to God, and how to live for God. We also have a free app that goes to your phone. It's called Parent Q app. It's free. You can download it. You can see the Bible story again with your kids. All of the information about the prompts for the queuing of parents is in there. And then we also create family experiences. And if you can't make it to church, we still have everything available online. You just go to our website and you can watch, the kids can watch a Bible teaching. They can have worship in the living room and activity sheets to follow up. We also have what we call family next steps. Our family next steps are things like Jumpstart, where we talk about salvation and baptism and discover the mission where kids are going to learn why we take communion and how to start practicing biblical stewardship. Outside of Sunday morning, we have Bible studies. We have treasured for tween girls and their moms. And we have level up for boys. These are going to help them to know what God says about their identity, their body, their friendships, technology. This is going to start a conversation with your tween that's going to prayerfully last all the way up until they're married because it opens up a door for something amazing to happen between a parent and a child. And then we have our Grow Discipleship for Kids for our 5th and 6th graders this year that's going to help them dive deeper and see the big, big, big story of Jesus and God and the Bible starting from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Our job as parents and Christian leaders is to use these tools and resources to train up a generation that will stand on God's word with boldness and they will not be intimidated by the secular giants that come against them. We're so grateful for the volunteers that are already have said yes. They show up weekly, they're here, they're talking to their kids. These people are not just changing a diaper, they're communicating that this baby has value and worth to the church and to God. 
And that kid that is covered with glue and glitter and just can't stop making paper airplanes on the carpets over and up street, <laughs> and they're laughing over there. <laughs> that could be our next senior pastor, <laughs> right? <laughs> so Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his field. Our pastor is asking us, to begin to offer children's ministry at the 11 o'clock hour. Since we closed for COVID, we started back up at 9 a.m., but we haven't been able to reach into that 11 a.m. hour, but there's still kids showing up, and we don't want to miss them, but we need a team. So I am praying, we are praying, I'm asking you to pray to the Lord of the harvest so that we will be able to offer that. And we'll be at the tables in the service between the, in the, our ministry open house is still happening. So come over to the tables, come talk to us. We can tell you more about that because you're not just filling a spot on a roster, you're filling a purpose. Children are sponges. So how can we purposefully help our kids and students be equipped to stand strong against the cultural giants that they face? This is the call on the church for every generation, but I believe it is amplified to our generation, to this moment and this time, because we've got to help these kids thrive in the face of cultural adversity and emerge as tomorrow's Christian leaders. You're going to go ahead and check this out. This is from someone who's gone full circle with Next Gen. Her story might inspire the beginning of your story. We do definitely do life together. We face challenges. We celebrate with each other. We do small group Bible study together. My name is Joanne Machuk, and I'm currently serving as the coach in the um, Bin Buddy program under Judy Wheat. I've been serving under the Bin Buddy ministry for probably 22 years, thereabout. Um, I started out as a um, assistant in the classroom and kind of moved on to coordinating more in a leadership role where I was uh, coordinating volunteers. A Bin Buddy is really a support person, uh, part of a team that's behind the scenes. And what we do is we come together each Thursday and, and we prepare all the various supplies and props and we make drawings or do whatever needs to be done to support the teachers in their role on a Sunday morning. Our group of volunteers through the years, I, I feel like I've accumulated so many friends as part of being uh, a in this group of bin buddies uh, because we do life together. I mean, one of the, the benefits definitely of being part of a community like this is that you not only get poured into over time, you get to pour out into other people. And that is definitely one of the benefits of being part of a small group community like this, that while you're volunteering, it, it's on a consistent basis, so you get to know people, and get, people get to know you, and you're invested in each other, and that, that's a real blessing. Judy Wheat was really the core person that I've dealt with over the years. Um, she's really a, the foundation of our part of children's ministry. She's been a, a key mentor to me um, personally, um, spiritually, and, and just in a, in a leadership role here. She's been a terrific mentor for me. There were giftings that I didn't realize that I had that other people saw, which was a blessing to me because then I was growing in, in not only my, my personal traits or my reliance on God that was growing because I was stepping out into something that I didn't necessarily feel comfortable in, but eventually grew into. As a parent, having had a child go through the children's ministry program as well as the middle school program and such, um, it's been a huge blessing to us as parents to have other adults um, share the same types of messages here at church um, that we're trying to encourage him to learn, our son to learn at home and to uh, new folks coming through with little ones. It's, we could not have done this without you. 
we're just so grateful for the godly influence that, that you've had on our son's life and we are just thankful for your presence and, and your skill set that you were just so willingly to give of. All right, go Bills. Hey, so if you've watched that video and you're like, man, I'm, I'm missing out. Um, there's still plenty of time to jump in and serve uh, as we start kick off next week. So if you're not a baby person, that's fine. Diapers stink. But there's also middle school, high school, college to jump into. So Donna talked a lot about what we do and offer, which is true. We don't plan stuff because you're bored or you got nothing going on. Um, we, the best thing for us is to have families discipled at home. That's what we want. Ultimate dream. Um, but we want to be a team. We want, we want to partner with you, offer some quality programs with quality people that you can know you can bring your students to and find connections. So every Sunday morning that happens. Every Sunday evening from 6.30 to 8.30, we just have awesome music, teaching, awesome small groups, and just some uh, planning that we like. Outreach nights for dodgeball tournaments and tailgate parties and just Sunday nights we have students from all over 716 come out. So they connect with each other, connect with God. And so we're pumped about that. Also, if you're in high school, um, you want to go deeper. Deeper level Bible study is offered Wednesday night, uh, 7 to 9. So be reminded of that. And if you're college, you know, college students who want to get connected, want to find other college students and go in their faith, every Wednesday night from 7 to 9. So we have lots of things that we're proud of. We want to partner with you. So just spread the word on those. Um, but real quick, I just wanted to bring back our, our theme verse and um, talk about that real, real briefly. So let's look at the verse together. All this is for your benefit. All of what? All that Christ has done for us is for your benefit. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thankfulness to overflow to the glory of God. I find it interesting that the word that we're in that verse, that the reaching, uh, the spreading is in there. Because over the last year, all we've heard about is the spreading of a disease, the spreading of a virus. It's caused disunity and disrupted homes, our world, our families. Uh, whatever side of the fence you land on, whatever, our world is in upheaval. Um, and as I, as a student pastor, as I watch kids process like sponges in this water right here, as I've seen them process over and over again, how parents process what they talk about, what they're processing at home, what they're communicating with family and friends. The students are watching, they're learning. How powerful is God? How much of God is in the equation here? And what am I supposed to do when crisis comes my way? I am not, I think people talk about fear a lot. Um, I don't think God's mad at us when we get afraid. Um, I have heard stories of people on ventilators never coming off. People who have died and gone through hard times. My cousin, two months ago, caught COVID pneumonia, and it killed her quickly and silently. And so two weeks ago, when I'm sitting looking at an ambulance in my driveway, looking to take me away, and an EMT who looks very concerned, what do you say to your kids at that moment in time? My biggest fear was a ventilator. But I don't know what they're going to do when I get there. There's no promises. I don't know if it's a ventilator or worse. But in that moment, when you have to leave the house and say goodbye to your kids, what do you say during that time? It's when crisis comes that we got to be paused. Remember that we have a God who has been there before us. And he causes things to happen to spread for his glory and his purpose. And the problem that I've seen in the church over this past year is we get so focused on what we can't control. And less focus on a God who is in control. My time in the hospital 
was sweet. I felt the presence of a God who loves me, not one who was angry with me. One who reminded me that, Matt, if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. And guess what? I love your family more than you do. So relax. When I left the hospital, I felt more of a a peace with my Savior than I did when I went in. And here's the litmus test of where we are as a people, as a church, as a culture. Jesus talked to his disciples, and he said, you are a sponge. And out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speaks. So church, what is coming out of our mouths when crisis comes? What spills out? What do people see? What do students see in us? What does your family see in us? When things flow out of your heart, what speaks? Paul told the Corinthians a few verses earlier. In chapter 4, he says, We have been given over to death so that the life of Christ may be manifest in us. And that word manifest is to become clear and obvious. I have given my life to Jesus Christ, not so that I can go to church the rest of my life and be bored, but I enter into a relationship that will change my life so that the life of Christ may be clear and obvious in my life. So we want to enter into a time of communion. If you can grab your um, cup and with, you, with your bread. If you don't have one, raise your hand. We'll try to grab you one. But <laughs> communion is not a time to check our brain at the door and do something we've been doing our whole lives. It's a time to be reminded of Christ's love for us. Jesus Christ went to a cross and we don't have to. He died on our behalf because he loves us. If you take the bread in your hand and just kind of look at it, it reminds you of Christ's body broken on a cross because of love. He is not out of control when he died on the cross. He was very much in control. And so this morning is a great time to take that bread and be reminded that Jesus told us, this is my body broken for you on purpose, for your purpose and glory. So the grace may spread to more and more people to cause thanksgiving to overflow and the glory of God to spread. Let's take that bread together. (laughs) And the next is the juice. God's blood shed for us. It was a cup that he had to take. No one could take that cup. It was a cup of judgment and wrath. And he alone could take it. He alone took it on purpose. He wasn't out of control. He was very much in control. His love for us over, overwhelms us. It should cause us to overwhelm us. It should cause us to be reminded of his love and grace every day. So let's take that cup and be reminded of, of a love that's so intense, so all-consuming. And it goes to everyone. Let's take that juice together. Father God, as we sit in your presence this morning, Lord, let us be reminded of just how great your love is for us. Lord, there is crisis always in our world. If we're not in crisis now, we'll probably enter into it soon, or maybe we're coming out of it now. But Lord, I pray that we won't be overwhelmed by life situations, but we will be overwhelmed by your love. Let us choose to not be out of control or focus on what we can control. But God, I pray you give us the courage and strength to focus on what we know to be true, that you are in control. You have a plan and a purpose. You have an all-consuming love. So I pray that as we walk along our family, maybe we're a mom and dad, an aunt and uncle, grandma, grandpa, that we are sponges. We are the water that fills them up. Lord, I pray that we will be reminded of our influence. I pray that your life will manifest, become clear and obvious in us. And the people around us will never be the same. We pray in your name. Amen. So as the kids come back up one more time, we're going to do one more song. And... 
what Matt just talked about, how we tend to focus, I think we all do this often, we focus more on what's not working well versus the God that's in control of it all. I think that that was such a point that I just want to write down in my journal and to remind myself. But that's what this next song talks about. It's called, I Speak Jesus. And instead of letting maybe vulgarities come out of our mouth when we're in the midst of something frustrating or criticism or a critical heart, are we just speaking Jesus over all of these circumstances? I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. What an amazing prayer. What power there is in the name of Jesus for us to be able to proclaim that over our families, over every situation that is going to come your way. We get to speak the name of Jesus over that. So you go home and you keep saturating your home and your children and their days and the time that you have with your family as much as you possibly can. And we're giving everybody um, these scripture lunch notes. So just pop them in their lunchbox or in their pack backpack even your college kids if they were to open up their backpack and find this from you maybe with a little note on the back it would mean everything as they go into this new school year right and then we also have this family fall family faith kit just a really cool little devotional guide to absorb everything that's beautiful about the season of fall with your with your little people at your house so a couple announcements that um, definitely stop at the ministry tables, get signed up, join a group, get engaged, keep growing, keep soaking it in. Move up Sunday for all of our kids that are three years old and potty trained. They're now ready to move up to their next group. So all of our kids that started kindergarten are coming to Up Street. All our kids that started middle school and sixth grade are moving down to the underground. It's an exciting time here at church. And don't forget the men's stakeout coming up. And parents with middle school and high school students, you have an open house tonight with Pastor Matt and Amy Dawson to talk about all the great things ahead for your kids this year. This is our benediction for today. Would you go ahead and stand with me? Ephesians 3.14 says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. This is how we'll experience the fullness of God. Have a great week, everybody. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Enjoy your week soaking up the Lord and go Buffalo Bills! <laughs>